everybody, welcome back to another video. I am Carmen Renee from Carmen Renee Blog. If you guys are new here to the YouTube family, then you will find out that we talk about everything from home decor to entertaining tips to fashion and lifestyle. I love sharing my life with you guys. I have two little kiddos and my husband Adrian who joins me on some of the vlogs. But today we are going to be talking about entertaining tips and how to create a fun charcuterie board. So before we begin this awesome video, I want you to make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, make sure you hit that bell notification so you never miss an upload. So in today's video, we are going to be doing a fun charcuterie board. Charcuterie board. I know I probably butchered that, but that's okay because guess what? We're gonna have fun today. Um, so. What I love the most about charcuterie boards are they're such a fun and exciting conversational piece, especially if you're having like guests over or you're throwing a party or you're having people over for the holidays. Charcuterie boards are just so fun and you can get so creative with all of the different items that actually go on the board. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys some of the basics in how to actually create one. Okay, so we have our wine, which I definitely recommend. And then you're going to get a few items to get ready to build your charcuterie board. So I will make sure to put all of the ingredients in the comment section so you guys know exactly what to get. But a fun, fun thought that you probably didn't think of is that a lot of people, I feel like, when you become an adult, charcuterie boards is like that adulting thing. And technically these are just large Lunchables and the wine is the Capri Sun. Okay, am I right? <laughs> so we're gonna just go ahead, I'm gonna show you guys what I have and then we're gonna plate it on a fun board that you must have. But I love to plate my meats on a nice metal, um, just metal board. You can get this from Whole Foods. Um, and then obviously like I like to keep my cheeses and my crackers on separate plates so that you guys will be able to see how I position them on the actual cutting board. So here are the ingredients. So of course you're gonna have your assortment of cheeses. You're going to have your assortment of crackers. You're going to need definitely some berries. I think that berries are really good um, because they change up the flavor of the taste of the cheese. I love adding chocolates. So definitely if you get some milk, chocolate, almonds, those are delicious. And then we have some dried apricots. Um, we're gonna move over to the meats board. I usually like to stick with two meats. I like salami and prosciutto. I feel like those are the best. You can kind of get different versions of salami, but we're going to have that as the meat. And then of course we have some dried cranberries. You definitely need some nuts. My favorite are cashews. I personally don't like almonds because I feel like they're a little bit too hard. Um, but you can also get pistachios, anything like that. Um, and then we have some grapes. We have another cheese, which is smoked Gouda. And then obviously we have our um, dippings, which is honey, we have some fig, and then we have some um, cherry spreads and things like that. So it's gonna be super delicious and so much fun. All right, let's get into this board. So let me explain a little bit about how to actually build out your charcuterie board. One of the things that you guys have to have when you're building out your charcuterie board is cheeses. That's your base, obviously. But the biggest thing is that you want to have a variation of soft and hard cheeses. Did you actually know that? You probably didn't. But I always like to have some soft cheeses, some hard cheeses, and then get assortment of flavors. So if you're headed to like your local market or your grocery store and you're trying to figure out what cheeses to buy for your actual charcuterie board, I like to think of it like this. Okay, you have your soft, you have your hard, but think of it also with your color palette. Do you want some color? Do you want like maybe a cheese that has a little bit of purple in it, um, some cheese that has fruit in it? Definitely 
a must-have cheese is brie. And then obviously some Asiago, some Parmesan, and cheddar, um, and Gouda. So you can also have a soft cheese like Gouda. I got this from World Market. And yeah, those are your cheeses. So when we get ready to start the board, I like to obviously start at the corner ends of my board when I'm building out my charcuterie board. And I love this part because it's super fun. So I start with my brie and I take my brie and place it at the opposite ends of the actual board, just like so. And then from there, I kind of just build out. So one of the things that you do want to pay attention to is when you're building out your charcuterie board, you want to make sure that the cheeses are placed on the opposite ends of the board as well as at the beginning. If you guys hear my son, that's okay because I am a mama too and this is real life, okay? All right, so. You have your brie that is going to be placed at the opposite ends. I like to have them um, basically facing each other. And then I always like to take, this is cheddar mixed with apricot. It is delicious. I got this at my local grocery store, but you can pick any types of cheeses that have any fruits in them. Those are really, really delicious. So I like to place that at the opposite end of the tray. And then I always like to keep a center open just for any uh, fruit or other cheeses that I like to build around the actual board. So we have some Asiago, which is really, really delicious. And I'm gonna place this at the opposite end. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it down just a bit because if your board, depending on the size of your board, you wanna make sure that you kind of balance out the cheeses. So we're just gonna cut this really quickly. And then the way to make it pretty, right guys, is to just cut a few slices out to just have it for people to kind of pick up with a toothpick, not a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a toothpick, right? <laughs> uh, to pick up with a toothpick or any form of utensil and then just have it kind of sitting out like that. So if you don't want it to look like the cheese was halfway there, then it looks like a nice presentation. And then I have this delicious Parmesan that is mixed with Merlot. It is so yummy, guys. And I got this from my local grocery store. So I'm just gonna cut that down, and instead of taking the base of the cheese, I'm actually gonna take the front part, and I'm going to lay it right in the middle, and I'm gonna cut it down again just to kind of have a few slices on the board. This way you have a few slices that people can pick up and go, and then when you get ready to start serving your, your charcuterie board, you can actually have like some utensils for people to cut the cheeses and things like that. But always, tip number one, always have pre-cut slices because you wanna be able to have people kind of serve themselves because that's the whole point of having a charcuterie board. Okay, so once I start there, I'm going to add in some nice, this is a soft cheese. So this is my Gouda cheese and it is a soft Gouda. And I'm gonna cut a few slices out just to have it on my board. I don't think that I'm going to place the entire cheese, um, cheese slice on there. I'm just gonna place my cut slices. So again, when you're building out your board, you wanna make sure that you have a few cheeses that people can eat. And I always love some soft cheeses and hard cheeses. So as I said before, Place the cheese kind of at the outer corners of the board and then you're gonna build around it. So I'm placing the Gouda next to the brie and the Parmesan and then the brie and the cheddar. And that is gonna be the start of our cheeses. So the next thing that I like to do before I even put the crackers down on the actual board, I like to start with the fruits. So the fruits are the next part. Um, I really think that you have to kind of play the fruits around the cheeses that are gonna taste the best. And so for me, brie and fruit go hand in hand together. They're just so delicious as an accompaniment. And I forgot to pause and say, we have a glass of wine. <laughs> 
Well, I was about to forget what the wine was actually called, but we have a glass of Cabernet Sauvignon, which is really good with any red meats. And so if you are looking to have a glass of wine as you're making your charcuterie board, get it because it's delicious. So I'm gonna put this back and I have my glass of wine. And so now we're gonna start plating the board with some of the fruits. So we have some blackberries, blueberries and raspberries. You always wanna make sure you have your trinity of berries. Those are the core trinity for your charcuterie board. And I like to just place that around the brie. I like to place the raspberries around the other section of the brie. And these are at the corner end. So you kind of see like how everything is like opposite of each other. The raspberries get a little messy, but that's okay because it doesn't make it fun if it's not a mess. All right, so the next part that I'm going to grab is some of the blueberries. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place some of the blueberries in the corner, like not the corner, but like a little pocket right here in between the cheese and the Parmesan. And blueberries are a really good yet sweet fruit that kind of offset the, um, the sharpness of cheddar, which is really delicious. And if you pair it together, sorry, it tastes wonderful. So we're just gonna put that in the little corner. And as I said before, you wanna have kind of like a balance for the fruit. So just place it around because you're also going to go in and move in with some grapes and some dried fruit. So next, we're gonna have some grapes. I'm gonna grab my little grape bowl. And I like to cut off a little bit of grapes and place them between the raspberries and the blueberries. So I like the fruit to kind of circle around the cheeses. And then you guys will start with the meats. So I go cheeses, fruits, meats, nuts, and then crackers, and then all of the drippings and dipping sauces and everything like that. So I'm just gonna take my knife and cut a little bit of grapes off because our charcuterie board is small. So you wanna make sure that when you're building out your charcuterie board, you kind of eye it based off of the size and you just know, okay, like how much can I actually put on this board? If you have a large board, then you can kind of build out and make it even larger. And the grapes look like a great contrast between the raspberries and blueberries and it looks delicious and I actually do believe that I'm going to put some raspberries on the side I mean not raspberries grapes on the side so we're gonna go ahead put some grapes on this side I'm gonna cut that up place that knife down take any other grapes out and just place that on the side oh my gosh you guys look how beautiful this is looking it is gorgeous already. It's so colorful. You've got the cheeses, you've got the grapes, and you're able to kind of like work around it. So you'll notice that there's pockets of space, right? And so those pockets of space are gonna be filled with either dried fruit, chocolate, nuts, however you set it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to kind of take a little bit of grapes off because our plate is not big. And I'm going to add some chocolates right in between the raspberries and grapes. Oh my gosh, you guys, chocolates are so good, especially these milk chocolate ones. Oh, you can get them from your farmer's market, your local grocery store. We have a central market here in Houston and it is, they carry like so many different cheeses. So I'm just gonna plate that and put all those chocolates there. And the next part that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add some dried fruit. So we have some dried cranberries here and we have some dried apricots. Now you can get really creative. If you're running out of space on the board, get creative with where you place the dried fruit. So since we already have kind of like a red for the raspberries, I'm gonna put a couple of dried cranberries in between the grapes and the raspberries. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the dried cranberries, a little bit around the fruits and the cheeses, just to kind of add like a little bit of element of prettiness. So we're gonna grab some apricots here. 
and we're gonna put that right in between the grapes and the raspberries. How cute is that? It looks so gorgeous. And if you wanna get even more creative, you can put like maybe one right here on the brie, right there, and I'm gonna show you guys how cute it's gonna look if you put an apricot on both of the cheeses with some rosemary and a little bit of dried cranberry. It just sets it and makes it look so stunning. So we haven't even done the meat, so I'm going to kind of move this around and position it in a way where we can start to have the meats. So I'm actually, you know what I'm gonna do guys? I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take the grapes out because we do need space for the meats. This board I got from Amazon guys, and it is so cute. And it actually does open out to have another section for a charcuterie board, which is really cool. So I'm gonna put that back. All right, so now we're gonna start with the meats. I'm only gonna take a little bit of meats, but you can even place some of the meats on the sides of the corner. This charcuterie board is made for crackers so that the crackers will not fall out. So you can actually place the crackers in the crevices right here, and then you can place the meat on the side. So, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some meat. And what I like to do with my meats, I like to roll them, especially if you need more space. So I'm just gonna roll these and place them next to the fruit. And this is some delicious prosciutto slices. All right, so I've placed a couple of uh, uh, prosciuttos on the board. I'm actually taking some salami and I'm placing that in the corners that are open at the ends. And I'm actually going to place a little bit of salami right here in between these cheeses. And you can kind of, you can curl the salami up, you can pinch it to kind of fit those corners. Whatever you need to do, kind of even starts to create like a little cute flower. You can like pinch them together. Um, whatever you need to do to create more space on your board, get creative. So like, even if you wanna pinch the salamis together to kind of create more um, space, if you wanna roll the prosciuttos up and create more space on the board, you can do that. And I love being able to do that. So, now that we have our fruits, cheeses, and our meats, we're gonna add some nuts and some dipping sauces. And then we're going to surround it with some crackers and it's going to be so delicious. So before I jump into the nuts, I forgot to add my dried cranberries. So I'm going to sprinkle these in between some of the fruits, some of the chocolates. And like, you don't have to have these in a section. You literally can sprinkle these in and they taste, oh my God, you guys, they taste so good with chocolate and wine. And chocolate really goes, pairs really well with red wine. So now I'm gonna just take some cashews. I really only have like maybe one or two sections to where I actually place the cashews at or the nuts, but I usually place them on the side. So we're just going to kind of fill them in right there. I'm gonna take some more and just fill them in. So just fill in those little spaces where you have extra, like a little bit of extra gaps to where you can have some of the nuts. So even right here, I have like a little space, so I'm filling that in and it's just, it's so fun because charcuterie boards are like one of those um, entertaining dishes that you really don't have, it doesn't have to look extremely like organized because the chaos makes it look so pretty, but I always like to make sure that you just have pockets where you can actually place like the nuts and everything like that. All right, so now we're going to get into the dippings, which is my favorite part. I love dippings and you guys, oh my gosh, how cute are these? I found these from Amazon. They are so adorable. They're for your honey, but you can literally drizzle your honey because these little jars, when you get them from the grocery store, sometimes it's hard to get the actual honey out. But you take a little honeycomb stick, put it in, and you can literally get the honey out just like that. How freaking cute is that? 
I'm gonna link that. But I'm going to place the honey right in the center where I have space, right there. And I'm just going to make sure that that looks super cute. And I don't, it looks like I don't have any more space on my board, but if you had a larger board, you could totally add another honey in. So we're just gonna make sure that, that is placed right there. Boom. And we are going, I always like to add like more honey. <laughs> so I'm going to place more honey. I'm just gonna drizzle it in this little cup outside so that it sits on the corner. And you can have like honey or cheese on the outside. And then I'm going to actually do probably a fig spread. This is actually, it's called a quince spread. It looks like fig, but it's an aromatic fruit. So we're gonna just use this because it's pretty creative. And then we have some fig. You guys get you some fig spread. Let me tell you, it is so freaking delicious. So I'm actually gonna put the fig spread in this little area. And I'm just going to take my knife and just get it out just like so. And now for a little bit of the extra part, which are the crackers. Oh my gosh, you guys. Crackers are literally the next piece of resistance. It is the chef's kiss to your charcuterie board. It makes everything taste so well. So we're going to actually, what I love about this charcuterie board, even though it is small, I do like the fact that it has these crevices where you can place the crackers to make it really easy on your life so you don't have to worry about anything. So we're just gonna go ahead and set these on the side. You can actually even do this. So we're just gonna set them on the side just like so, make it look pretty guys. If some nuts fall down, just throw them back on your board. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna add some salt water crackers on the side. Salt water crackers go really well with the brie. So we're gonna put those around the board. And then we're going to add some cranberry and walnut crackers. Oh my gosh, these are so good and they go so well with all of the cheeses because they have like a little bit of that sweet and savory taste. So I like to just sprinkle these on the side. And then we're gonna add just some rosemary crackers right here. And then these are some sesame crackers. And we're gonna add these right here. And I'm gonna look, now what you wanna do is you wanna look at your board and you wanna see where you need to fill some things in. So it looks like I can just push some of the salt water crackers in right here and then fill this part up with some extra crackers. I'm just gonna lift that up so it just sits nicely on the board like so. And then I'm going to place some extra crackers on the side right here, boom. And that is not it. We're not done yet, okay? This is the final part, the rosemary. <laughs> I dropped the rosemary. But you guys, the rosemary is so pretty and it's really kind of like the decorative piece of your board. You're not gonna eat it. But what I like to do is I always love to just add the rosemary and kind of stick it into the cheese and I place it next to the apricot. How pretty is this? Oh my gosh. And if it's too long, just cut it. And then literally all you're gonna do is just stick it into the cheese. <gasps> How cute is that? Now, I'm gonna add just a couple of cranberries on top just to kind of just make it look so adorable. And you guys, that's it, we're done. How easy, quick, and simple is that? You can add more meats if you like, you can add more chocolates if you like, but depending on the size of your board, you just really wanna, you know, kinda play around with it and see how you wanna design it. But this is it, and you're ready to go. You're ready to serve your family, your friends, whoever is over, if you're having a girls' night, which I love. I love charcuterie boards on girls' nights, 
and you have your glass of wine and that's it it's super simple we didn't add the smoked gouda but if you guys want to add that you can you don't have to because we already have so many different types of cheeses so i will leave that for another charcuterie board at another time but that is it oh my gosh you guys let's dig in let's have a little little taste mm. oh my god so good i love cashews so delicious well i'm gonna sip my wine mm. and the cheeses oh my god everything goes so well together so if you are looking for more tips on how to do charcuterie boards this is it i will have all of the ingredients in the comment section but thank you for joining us and i cannot wait to see your charcuterie boards when you put it together tag me on instagram and let me see how you make it all right so now you are finished here is your charcuterie board i love making these guys remember all you need is some soft cheeses some hard cheeses some assortment of crackers fruits dried fruits the trinity of berries the blackberries raspberries blueberries i love cashews it's a soft nut that you can chew easily and of course some milk chocolate almonds those are so delicious and of course some honey and some fig these are the perfect ingredients to really put and bring your charcuterie board together i love making these when I have family over, if I have any girlfriends over, I know it's COVID, so we're kind of staying like a little bit of social distancing. But what's even cool is that if you don't wanna make like a large charcuterie board for everybody, you can even make mini charcuterie boards for people to take and eat. So this was so much fun. Please let me know in the comments where, what you guys like to make in terms of like your charcuterie board. When do you like to make it for? Do you like to make it for holidays, birthdays? Um, what do you enjoy making? Do you enjoy making charcuterie boards? Have you ever made one? And let me know. I love these for my girls nights in, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure if you love this video to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, follow me on my social channels. Make sure to follow me over on Instagram where I'm at. But cheers, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care, bye.